fist the dagger. G'day guys, JB here, coming at you with another NBA Finals game review. This one for Game 4, and this was just Dallas's version of Game 1, which it was for Boston. And it was just murderer's row, there's no doubt about it. Dallas come out with a genuine intent to not be swept, to at least break even on their home floor, and at least try and extend this series for one more game. And they achieved that with flying colours. One of the biggest blowouts in NBA Finals history. Uh, getting a margin there. One of the biggest leads in the history of the Finals overall. And just absolutely dominant from start to finish. There's not really much more to say, so let's get into it. Let's get into the breakdown for Game 4 of the 2024 NBA Finals. We'll start with that first quarter. Dallas just breaking it open. Massive game for them to start with. 34-21 first quarter. Clearly started the game with the intent of extending that series. And why not? You certainly don't want to be the team on your home floor being swept and watching a championship uh, trophy presentation. There's no doubt about it. So it was really easy for Dallas. Simple motivation. Boston were cold early. They showed glimpses, though. There were just moments where you thought, uh, maybe this is the Boston we saw in Game 3, the one that wasn't quite in tune, the one that took a bit of time, and that once that uh, engine started uh, warming up and got out of the garage, and got on that open road, that they were going to be fine. And it looked okay. Jason Tatum, 11 of his 15 points in this game, uh, was in the first quarter, really tried to pull him out. But honestly, there was a really active Dallas crowd. They carried a heap of momentum. Dallas managed to get their lead out early, managed to really set the pace. Kyrie Irving, huge with nine points, but Luka Doncic was the ultimate pace setter, really looking to answer himself, uh, answer some of his critics himself, uh, and he had 13 points there. As I mentioned, Dallas with the lead, 34-21 in the first quarter. And the second quarter was very much the same. A dominant run once again, a 13-point margin of difference there, 27 to 14 at halftime. This one was all but over. 26 points in favour of the Mavericks, 61-35. They'd all but ended that game with arguably their hottest start of the playoffs, uh, let alone the finals. Luca at this point had 25 to his name by the half. He had 29 for the game. Uh, and became one of the three youngest players to ever have 25 points in the first half of a finals game. You know, and it was really exemplified as well on the other side of it. The fact that Boston wasn't being able to do anything defensively was one thing, but on the other side of the floor, they had just three made shots there in that second term. 11 for the half. No offense whatsoever, and no answer on the defensive end. I don't care who you are or what you do. If your team can't make a shot and then they can't stop a shot, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. Dallas were really good. You know, there were some points there where Dallas were really locking in defensively. You can argue the much as well that, you know, Boston did have some really easy looks, had some air balls, had shots that were dropping throughout this series that just didn't go down. And Dallas all but had this one in control from there. They only had to stay relatively in touch with Boston quarter for quarter, and that's exactly what they did. Third term saw them up 31-25 to 25, uh, and blew it out by as much as 38. So... Really in control of this one here. Uh, Kyrie posted 10 points in the third term to all but wrap it up. He finished with 21 for the game. Boston did try to salvage something, and as far as efficiency is concerned, they had their best quarter of the game to that point. But when you lose the quarter by another six, you trail by 32. You were trailing by as much as 38. Uh, you were pretty much just waiting for that final siren to blow. Uh, as I said, efficiency was one of their best quarters, but when you can't lock in defensively and you're giving it up on the other end, it, it doesn't mean diddly squat. I mean, if they turn around and force a really inefficient third by Dallas, you know, does a little bit of doubt creep into the opposition's mind? Well, it certainly wasn't going to do that today. Uh, and again, fourth quarter, both sides emptying the benches, running their second and third teams. Tim Hardaway getting in on the act. He had 15 points in that final term. Uh, I didn't think he was anything considerable when the game was moving, uh, but 15 in that final term. Uh, saw that Dallas lead balloon, and he got out to as much as 48. I repeat, it got out by as much as 48. It's the largest lead in any finals game for the past half century, 
and the blowout itself ranks amongst the top four in finals history. Just a, a massive run there. I mean, both sides ran their second units, as I mentioned. It was all but over. First time in this final series that Dallas cracked 100 points in a game. And for Boston, it was their lowest score in an NBA Finals game since Game 3 of 2010 against the Lakers. And it's going to sound really silly, but through three games there, the margin in favour of Boston was 32 points. And now somehow it swung back in favour of Dallas. So Dallas, despite trailing 3-1 to one in this series, actually have scored more points by six uh, against Boston, which is really crazy to think. I mean, not much more to summarise from there. Your MVP of this game, clearly Luka Doncic. And we move over to a 3-1 margin in favour of the Dallas Mavericks. When you look at Dallas there for the game, 29 points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists and 1 turnover there for Luka. 46.2 from the field, didn't make a 3. 71.4 from the free throw line. Kyrie Irving uh, having a nice contribution there as well, as I mentioned, really sealed that and locked things up there in the third term, blew it out beyond proportion. 21 points, 4 rebounds, 6 assists to go with one turnover there, 55.6 from the field, 16.7 from deep, didn't make a free throw. And it was Derek Lively who I thought was their other key contributor, he's been really nice off the bench for them, 11 points, 12 rebounds and a steal, 80% from the field, made his one three-point attempt uh, and 50% from the stripe for Boston. Really speaks out when leaders of your second and third units are the guys that are really making those shots. Uh, Tatum, 15 points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists, 1 steal and 2 blocks. As I mentioned, had had uh, 11 of those 15 there in the first term. 40% from the field, 25% from deep, 100% from the line. Sam Howes up, 14 points, 4 rebounds, 71.4 from the field, 66.7 from deep to make a free throw. Peyton Pritchard, 11 points, 3 rebounds, 3 assists on 2 turnovers. Struggled to hit water falling out of a boat. 37.5 from the field. 16.7 from deep. Did make a free throw. Honestly, summary of that one there. Luke and Kyrie helped save the sweep. But you do have to feel, though, that the Celtics remain in that more than commanding position to want to claim it on their home four in Game 5. They're going to have to really utilize that Larry Bird type of motivation. You know, they, they played like sissies. They need to get out there and play like men. They need it to really bounce back and return serve in this one. They were uh, Larry's famous words that, that motivated the Celtics to a seven-game win in 1984. My initial pick of this series was for it to go six games, but you just think after that massive loss on the road, Boston are going to want to rejuvenate. They're going to want to celebrate in front of their fans. If it goes back to Dallas, and Dallas put up that kind of performance, we are probably going to look at a Game 7 uh, returning to the NBA Finals. I mean, no team has ever recovered from a 3 nil series uh, as far as being down 3-0 in a series ever. Ironically, though, the closest that it's ever uh, came to happening was uh, back in the 1951 NBA Finals after the Knicks, the New York Knicks, rallied from a 3-0 deficit, forced a Game 7 against the Royals, weren't able to execute down the stretch, gave up a turnover, uh, and fell short by four points. So the closest it's ever happened has been the NBA Finals. There have been multiple times where it has gone seven games. And of course, Boston, that team that forced seven games last year. But it's a really big ask there uh, for anyone to be able to do it. 3-1 lead still to the Celtics. Margin is actually in favour of Dallas right now. We're going back to Boston for Game 5. Anyway, guys, that's been me and how I saw Game 4 of the 2024 NBA Finals I'll be out.